What's going on, lovely people? It's Medicosis Perfectionist. Let's continue our five minute review playlist. It's time to talk about diabetic nephropathy, which is a subtype of nephrotic syndrome. There are many systemic diseases that can lead to nephrotic syndrome. One of them is diabetes, another one is lupus, a third one is amyloidosis. This is my five minute review playlist. Please watch the kidney videos in order. In all of these previous videos, most of the time the kidney was the first organ to be affected. So we call this primary glomerulopathies. But when it comes to diabetes, the patient had diabetes first and then the kidney got affected. So we call it secondary glomerulopathy. Today's video is going to be super fast because we have discussed most of these concepts before. As you know, your blood is made of plasma and cells. Plasma has proteins such as albumin and globulin. Why do we get hypoproteinemia? Maybe because we're not eating protein, maybe we are not making protein, or maybe we're losing protein in the stool or in the urine. When you lose it in the urine, it's called nephrotic syndrome. Any cause can lead to edema. A good kidney is like a good colander, does not let the protein through. A bad kidney with nephrotic syndrome is like a screwed colander, it lets the protein through. That's horrible. When I lose my protein in the urine, I lose my oncotic pressure and I get edema. Nephrotic syndrome has four things, high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. Nephrotic syndrome subtypes include minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetes, amyloidosis. Primary, 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 secondary, secondary. What are these secondary diseases that can cause glomerulopathies? You have diabetes, you have lupus, amyloidosis, multiple myeloma, Hinochschalnium purpura, good pasture syndrome or anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody, and granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly Wegner's. The patient had diabetes first, and then secondary to that diabetes, now we have kidney problems. The young, the addict, the thick, the sweet, the green apple. All of your body secretions come from the plasma. Your urine comes from the plasma. This is the plasma. It gets filtered in the kidney and then you get urine. After you filter the plasma, this is the glomerular filtration. You can reabsorb the good stuff back to the blood. You can secrete the bad stuff to the urine. This is your abdominal aorta. Renal arteries will supply the kidney. The renal artery becomes segmental artery and then interlobar artery, arcuit artery, interlobular artery. This interlobular artery will become afferent arterial and then the glomerular capillary tuft and then efferent arterial. Just a quick note, this part of the kidney is called the renal pelvis. Diabetes can destroy the renal pelvis causing acute or chronic pyelonephritis. Diabetes can injure your papilla, these parts, the tips of the pyramids, causing papillary necrosis. Here is the afferent arterial, this is the efferent arterial. Diabetes will destroy your vessels and it will start destroying the efferent arterial before it destroys the afferent arterial. Diabetes will make your capillary basement membrane very thick thanks to the deposition of type 4 collagen because type 4 is in the floor, is in the basement membrane. Diabetes will cause a hyperfiltration injury, too much pressure, too much blood filtered. This hyperfiltration is gonna injure your mesangium, causing mesangial sclerosis, which can lead to proteinuria. The glomerulus will get very sclerosed and hardened, and you can even see something called nodular glomerulosclerosis or the Climsteel wilson nodule. Don't forget that diabetes is so sweet. Now get out your chemistry notebook because I'm about to take you to class. When you add a sugar to a protein and you bind them together by a covalent bond, thanks to the help of an enzyme, we call this process glycosylation. When you do the same stinking thing without any enzymes, we call this glycation or glycosylation without enzymes or non-enzymatic glycosylation. And this is the difference between glycosylation with an enzyme and glycation with no enzyme. So if your woke professor says non-enzymatic glycation, it means that he's a doofus because glycation is always non-enzymatic by definition. Your professor might as well say, I want a glass of wet water. Well, water is always wet. 
How does diabetes damage my body? Non-enzymatic glycosylation or glycation. You have diabetes, you have hyperglycemia, and this super sweetness will cause non-enzymatic glycosylation or glycation. Too much glucose is gonna destroy my proteins and my fat. And if you remember, your cell membrane had lipid and protein. So basically diabetes can damage every single cell in your body especially those vessels, the small vessels and the big vessels, causing retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy. Why do diabetics die? Number one, myocardial infarction. Number two, chronic kidney disease or renal failure. How does diabetes damage my kidney? It damaged the kidney vessels, it damaged the kidney glomeruli, and it damaged the renal pelvis and the papilla. What's glycated hemoglobin? Normally, your red blood cell has hemoglobin. Yeah, part of it is glycated thanks to glucose because you have glucose in your blood, I hope so. And normally it should be like about 5% or so. But in diabetics, this 5%, oh, look at this, it's 10%. Too much glycation, too much sweetness. The hemoglobin A1c tells your doctor how is your sugar doing over the last three to four months. But why three to four months? Because the normal lifespan of your red blood cell is between 90 days and 120 days. Duh! This slide is epic. Renal disease and diabetes. Diabetes damages your renal vessels, your glomeruli, and your renal pelvis. Vessels, big vessels, small vessels causing renal atherosclerosis, hyaline arteriolosclerosis, hyaline means pink because of proteins. Do you remember hyaline membrane disease in the lungs? Yeah, it was pink under the microscope because it has proteins. You have osmotic damage to the glomerular capillary endothelium. Why? Because glucose gets converted to sorbitol thanks to the aldose reductase enzyme. Sorbitol is osmotically active, is gonna attract water, and this is osmotic damage to your kidney. Diabetes will increase the deposition of type 4 collagen in the basement membrane, making it thick. Diffuse mesangial sclerosis thanks to the hyperfiltration injury and you get nephrotic range proteinuria, severe proteinuria, more than 4 grams per day. And you can even get nodular glomerulosclerosis or the Klimsteel wilson lesion, which is PAS positive. Why does it stain positive for the PAS? Because PAS stains the sugar, if you remember, and diabetes is so sweet. Quick physiology review. This is my afferent arterial. This is my efferent arterial. Normally blood comes this way. The plasma gets filtered here. 20% of the plasma will come here. The 80% will go to the efferent arterial. The plasma that goes this way is called the filtration, the filter plasma. How do I increase this filter plasma or the GFR? You dilate the afferent or you constrict the efferent. If you dilate the afferent, more plasma will come in. If you constrict the efferent, the blood will have no place to go but here. So all of the stuff in the afferent will end up here. If diabetes damages my efferent arterial before the afferent arterial, what's gonna happen to the GFR? It's gonna go up and this is the hyperfiltration injury. Too much filtration here. And that's why ACE inhibitors help people with diabetes because ACE inhibitors inhibit the formation of angiotensin II. What was the normal function of angiotensin II? May he rest in peace. It used to constrict the efferent and raise my GFR. But when you take ACE inhibitors, you will decrease the GFR and decrease the hyperfiltration injury. It makes sense. Let's review these nephrotic syndromes. Number one, minimal chain disease. The patient was young. The patient responded to steroids. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. The patient had HIV or heroin use. And there was poor response to steroids. Membranous nephropathy. The patient is older. The membrane was super thick. That's why we call it membranous. There is a very high risk of clots. Diabetic nephropathy. The patient is already diabetic. Could be type 1 or type 2, usually for a long period of time. This is a poorly controlled diabetes. Hypertension is another risk factor. When you see diabetic nephropathy, check the patient's retina because retinopathy and nephropathy usually happen together. This is a very slow progression. It's a very chronic disease. We start with microalbuminuria and we end up with nephrotic range proteinuria. First, your kidney is leaking some proteins, but now the kidney is leaking a lot of proteins. Light microscopy, diffuse thickening of the capillary wall. Remember the hyaline arteriolosclerosis. You can see Klemsteel-Wilson nodule, diffuse mesangial sclerosis, papillary necrosis. 
electron microscopy might show you some podocyte fusion. How do I manage it? This is a secondary disease, so you manage the underlying condition, which is diabetes. Add ACE inhibitors for two reasons. ACE inhibitors will lower my blood pressure, which is awesome. ACE inhibitors decrease the hyperfiltration injury to protect the kidney. Here are the five stages of chronic renal failure. And here is my tips for the pros. ACE inhibitors are cool, but they are awesome. And I mean amazing. And I mean miraculous in three specific cases. Number one, scleroderma nephrosis. Number two, diabetic nephropathy with hypertension. Number three, henoch shanley and purpura. In any of these cases, give ACE inhibitors. But they are contraindicated during pregnancy. Pause and review. Here is a question for you. Let me know the answer in the comments. The correct answer will be in the next video. This video is discussing kidney pathology. If you want kidney physiology, I have a course about this on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a course about acid-base imbalance and all of the diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma, all of this cool stuff. And to manage hypertension, I have a cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.